front of you is the e mini s p from around mid 2011 to about uh four years later just heading into mid 2015 a very clear very nice easy bull trend the market trending up from a low uh, around the uh, summer or autumn of 2011. Now markets generally are not as easy to, trends I should say, uh, in these markets are not as easy to spot, especially at the moment. Many of the Forex and commodity markets are certainly nowhere near uh, trending uh, as well as this. So this is a good example anyway. Uh, and now, although we have a clear trend uh, as you go through the years, if you were to start looking around 2011, 2012, let's say it was only the end of 2012, you may not be certain that this is the start of a long bull trend. So we use trend lines to, to try to more clearly identify a trend when it's not quite so clear. In a bull trend, we are looking to join the lows of the dips. So for example, every bull trend will move up, pull back, move up, pull back, just as it's doing here. That's a healthy bull trend when you get these little corrections, uh, sometimes called bull flags. We'll go into the patterns at a later time. So what you need to do is join the lows of the troughs to establish a trend. So here you see quite nicely, this, bull, this trend line works really well. We've joined the two lows here and you see much further down the line, in fact, two and a half years later how the pullback a significant correction that we saw in the last quarter of 2014 just kissed that trend line and rocketed so traders who had that trend line on their chart and who had left it there would have seen that as a really strong buying opportunity and clearly that certainly did work because we rocketed off that trend line and made a new high into the end of the year two points is enough to establish a trend line but the more times a trend line is tested and holds the more important it is because it's obvious that traders and investors are clearly following this trend line and using it as as a buying opportunity when it's tested so within this big bull trend that you see here on the screen there are smaller bull trends that you can also add trend lines to let's see which of those work so it's a trial and error process with trend lines as you get more experience, you tend to spot them a little bit easier, a little bit more quickly. But this is a, a nice sort of sub-trend, if you like, a very strong trend. The pullbacks are very small. And as you see, this trend line is tested many more times than the bigger trend line below this one. Uh, we have a test, well, once we've drawn the, drawn the trend line with this spike lower, then it's tested one, two, three, four times, although this, this is, this is uh, we do bounce off it initially, but then of course we break lower. But even up here, you can see the trend line is a factor and then it starts to get muddied. The waters get muddied and it's less clear. But even as we move, if I shift this chart along, you'll see that the trend line is still relevant. So it's usually worth keeping trend lines on your chart. You don't know when you might need them in the future. And here uh, in April, May, June, uh, we see in 2015, we see how this trend line did that work pretty well as a resistance level before the market turned lower. So this is a good example of how trend lines can be used, uh, support trend lines in a bull trend can be used to spot buying opportunities when you see a little correction or some profit taking uh, in that bull trend. What this also shows is how the trend line will act as support when the price is trading above it, but when you start to break below it, the trend line will act as resistance and that's what you're seeing here. Now note how we, uh, this is the lower trend line that we drew first and this is having exactly the same effect here. Okay, it's not pinpoint accurate, but you can see once the price breaks down through this trend line with this big red candle and we really have quite a steep plunge, we try to come back up above it and we can't make it. And towards this area here, you can see the trend line really working. And in the end, the bulls are overcome with selling pressure. So this trend line will work as support when the price is trading above and the trend line will work as resistance when the price is trading below. And here you see a fairly significant correction there uh, into the beginning of 2016. Right, I've just jumped forward to today's uh, price action. 
uh, which is on the 6th of October 2017. You can see this trend line now, we were looking at it here and as I've jumped forward, look how well this trend line is now acting as resistance. Even though we are in a bull trend and even though the market is recovering and has easily beaten the highs of 2015, strong bull trend for the E-mini S&P. But this, but it's hugging below this trend line. This trend line, which was such a great support line, is a very strong resistance line. So the question now is, will the S&P eventually, will it, it could keep crawling along the bottom of that trend line, but uh, obviously it could reverse and we could get some strong selling pressure. Now, if we were to reverse and head lower, we can, we can put another little sub trend line in here, in fact. Let me just add that one. This one's pretty accurate been tested many times in the initial stages of the trend line, tested again here, here, uh, we about bottomed just above it uh, here in July and then we tested it very well into August with a little spike below but you can see the close on the day was above this trend line so the trend line really has been doing its job this year. So if we were to reverse from the longer term trend line here, we could dip to this little small sub trend line here around the 2470 area. If that was to break, uh, who knows, we could even head down as far as this trend line. This trend line isn't so important, it's only been tested twice, but there's no, no reason to say it won't be tested into the future. The mini S&P is an example of a beautiful bull trend with very nice tradable support trend lines but markets don't normally work like that. They're not so easy to trade. This is gold going back to the end of 2012 to, to the present day price uh, in October 2017. You can see that the price did deteriorate, did collapse from a high up in November, was it? Uh, October 2012 and trended down, but it wasn't that nice, easy trend that we saw in the S&P. We collapsed and then we traded sideways for ooh, over a year. Then we collapsed again. Now we're seeing some sort of recovery. So. This is the way I would structure my trend lines here. Uh, it's, it's, it's not so clear, but the trend lines are working. So for example, this re more recent period of, since 2014, you can see that in fact, we're trading in more of a sideways direction than anything else. Markets do trade sideways for long periods of time. Uh, people look for trend, uptrends and downtrends, something that they can jump on to see some price movement. But unfortunately for traders, we do see markets spending significant amounts of time trending sideways, probably trending sideways more often than uh, trading up or down. So this is when trend lines really become perhaps even more useful. You've got to really, uh, it's, it's much more di difficult to identify support and resistance areas and you're never sure where, when to be long or short. So if you can put some trend lines on, it'll help to identify areas where you can uh, trade the sideways trend, move in and out. I've got some moving averages on here as well and I'll go into that in more detail in a, in a later, at a later stage in, a, in, a, in one of the other lessons. But you can see that when the trend lines intersect and overlap, especially with moving averages, these become very powerful areas of support and resistance. So for example, if gold were to fall into the 1240, 1235 area where this cluster uh, co um, co in, coincides with each other, that would be a very strong support level. Now I've only shown you trend lines on a daily chart. You should be looking at different time periods, weekly charts, uh, maybe even a monthly chart. You'll need to be putting trend lines on shorter term charts if you're a, a day trader or a swing trader trading in more short time periods. So you could uh, put tr uh, your trend lines on a four hour chart, one hour chart. Some people scout markets, they'd be looking at putting trend lines on a 15 minute chart or 30 minute chart. So you've got to uh, be aware of all the different time periods because trend lines will look very different on, on different time periods and uh, you need to be aware of where they are. So the only way you're really going to get used to understanding trend lines, where to put them is practice, 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 practice. Look at lots of different charts, throw your trend lines on, see how they work, leave your trend lines on so you can see if they work well into the future. It is purely practice and experience with trend lines. It's a very simple concept to understand, but putting it into practice.